Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries and new revelations in regards to this unusual phenomenon coming from our own galaxy, the Milky Way, known as the Fermi Bubbles. The unusual formations discovered back in 2010 and then rediscovered in different frequencies only a couple of years ago. The formations that the scientists believe are a direct sign that back in the days, not so long ago, our galaxy was extremely active and very likely produced extremely powerful jets, maybe even turning our galaxy in what we sometimes refer to as a quasar. But in this case, we don't really know what effects this had on anything in the galaxy, and we obviously don't understand if this had any effects on planet Earth. And so this recent study kind of presents us with a few answers about some of these potential questions, while also connecting several other discoveries into one single event. And so let's begin with a bit of a history to help you understand what all of this means. Back in 2008, NASA and several other agencies launched the very, very productive Fermi telescope. The telescope that was responsible for discovering a lot of different gamma ray emissions across the entire universe. Here's, for example, one of its many discoveries, the gamma rays coming from the famous Vela Pulsar. And for about 13 years now, it's been watching the skies and discovering new things. But back in 2010, it was able to observe an unusual formation right in the center of our galaxy, the formation that kind of resembled a typical bubble. These two formations today are referred to as Fermi bubbles because of the telescope that was responsible for discovering them. With these huge structures being several thousand light years across and being produced by extremely fast moving particles, most likely cosmic rays, which can be only detected in high energy gamma rays. But since the original discovery, it was not particularly clear what might have created this. Then, approximately 10 years after the discovery of this, the scientists discovered something else and in completely different frequencies. And in this case, instead of using a gamma ray telescope, it was a discovery made in the X-rays and a discovery made with a telescope known as Erosita. A telescope we discussed in one of the previous videos available right there or in the description below. Now, unfortunately, and this is a bit of a side note, this telescope was turned off because of the war in Ukraine and because this was actually a collaboration between German scientists and Russian scientists. We don't really know when and if this is going to become operational, but for now, this is maybe the end of its mission. Nevertheless, during its few years of operation, it was able to make some incredible discoveries in the X-rays of things that were previously invisible to us. And as you can see from this image, it sort of discovered another set of bubbles. The bubbles we now refer to as Erosita bubbles because the name of the telescope was Erosita. And we've discussed this in more detail in one of the previous videos, but the thing is, this is actually an incredible discovery for several different reasons. First of all, when it was originally found in 2020, the scientists realized it was connected to another structure that was actually already known to us, the structure that you see right there, known as the North Polar Spur. It seemed that the polar spur in this case might have actually been part of the bubble, but nobody knew what it represented simply because the telescopes were not powerful enough back then. As a matter of fact, here's what all of this looked like in the X-rays prior to the data from the Erosita. That's of course the Milky Way galaxy in the X-rays. But more incredibly, as the scientists compared the data to the Fermi telescope, they discovered that these two structures were basically on top of each other, with the X-ray structure being a lot larger. Overall, all of this sort of looked like this, with the solar system visible right there on the right. Now in this case, the Fermi bubbles were approximately half as big, with the larger Erosita bubbles being approximately 25,000 light years in height. But because this was only visible in the X-rays, it also meant that it was made out of completely different stuff. Unlike the Fermi bubbles that were most likely made out of cosmic rays, which is basically highly charged particles, in most cases protons, moving extremely fast, the X-ray bubbles or Erosita bubbles were simply made out of extremely hot gas, most likely hydrogen gas, but in this case not charged particles, not cosmic rays. Nevertheless, because these two structures overlapped one another and were most likely coming from the center of the galaxy, it was always suggested that this was probably a result of powerful explosions from the center of the Milky Way from Sagittarius A star black hole. But there were several other explanations, including potentially a lot of supernova happening at the same time because of a sudden star formation somewhere in the region. In other words, it was not entirely clear what created these bubbles and more importantly if it was the same event or different events. 
And all of this because it was seen in different frequencies and contained different stuff. If it was created by different events, these events might have happened millions of years apart. And as a matter of fact, it wasn't even clear when these bubbles were formed and how long they actually stayed in this region and if they were going to disappear anytime soon. Although, as a side note, the detection of these bubbles by themselves is not really unusual. These structures have been seen in other galaxies, and I think the best example of this is from a galaxy known as NGC 379. And in this case, these super bubbles were also discovered in the X-rays, with the supermassive black hole most likely being responsible for their production. The bubbles themselves are relatively large as well, a few thousand light years across and, at least in terms of shape, do resemble the ones we find in our own galaxy, at least to some extent. But in this case, the scientists investigating this galaxy discovered that this is very likely a repeated event. It seems to happen every 10 million years or so. With the most recent bubble that you see right here being created approximately a million years ago, but in terms of size being approximately 10 times smaller than the one in the Milky Way with the supermassive black hole in the middle of this galaxy most likely being the culprit behind this. It's approximately 2.4 million masses of the Sun in mass, or roughly around half the mass of the one that we have. And so I guess the natural next question here is, okay, well, if this is the same type of an event forming this, is this what happened in the Milky Way? Was it basically some kind of a rebubbling event that happens every few million years? Potentially massive supernova events, or something coming from the center of the black hole? So in other words, it was always kind of curious to the scientists what exactly is causing these super bubbles in different galaxies to repeat over and over. With the primary question in this case being, are these two different events millions of years apart? And that's precisely the question that the scientists behind this recent study decided to answer. They wanted to find out if this was the same event, and if it was the same event, how exactly did it progress? And in this case, the scientists decided to model this and to run a computer simulation just to see if they can recreate a similar formation using a model. With the simulation in this case being able to focus on the interaction of different types of high energy gas producing X-rays with various types of cosmic rays producing gamma rays. And according to the conclusions in this paper, it's very likely the same event. It's very likely a single event. A single powerful event that consumed anywhere from 1,000 to 10,000 solar masses within a period of approximately 100,000 years, which then released all of this huge amount of energy, creating these two massive bubbles. With all of this starting approximately 2.6 million years ago, and all of this very likely resulting in extremely powerful jets, sort of similar to what we detect from a lot of other galaxies. Suggesting, of course, that our galaxy resembled something like this for some time. And according to their simulation, when huge amounts of matter started falling into the central black hole, the resulting pressure from the jets started to inflate the giant bubbles that then were formed around the galaxy, which pushed all of the matter that was closer to the center all across the galaxy. And in this case, this outburst also seemed to have inflated the bubbles in different phases, with the first phase most likely producing very powerful jets which quickly accelerated all of the matter away from the central black hole. And as these jets moved farther and farther away, they started to fill up the space that we now call Fermi bubbles. That's essentially why we have so many gamma rays coming from there, because the actual cosmic rays, the actual protons, charged protons, got stuck in that region. But while the Fermi bubbles were expanding across the galaxy, they also started to push a lot of the gas that was already nearby that ended up creating an enormous shockwave that's visible today. With this shockwave resulting in a lot of really heated gas, which is what's visible right here in the X-rays. And so basically the hydrogen gas that's emitting X-rays was just pushed away from the center by the huge pressure created by all of the cosmic rays coming from the black hole's center. With the study also implying that it would be impossible for any type of a supernova event, even if there were many supernova, to produce something like this. All of this very likely lasted for approximately 100,000 years, and seems to be the best explanation right now for how all of this was created. But I guess what's not clear yet is, is this kind of similar to what happened in this particular galaxy? And more importantly, is this something that happens a lot? With the most important question in this case, what effects did this have on our planet and our solar system? Because this happened 2.6 million years ago, we don't really have enough data to suggest that it affected our planet in any way. But since this was such a powerful event that's visible from planet Earth, 
The scientists in this case would love to find out if this does have any effect on anything. For example, maybe it could change our atmosphere. At the moment, none of this is known to us yet. Either way, definitely an exciting discovery and an exciting study, and definitely another solution to a very old mystery. But I guess for now that's kind of all we know. The next step is to explore what else is happening in nearby galaxies and to try to see what effects this has on nearby stars. And also to find out if this actually happened in our galaxy previously, possibly 10, 20, 30 million years ago, and what exactly happened 2.6 million years ago to cause all of this to start. Was it some kind of a dust cloud? Was it a collection of different stars? Was it something else entirely? Something really, really massive? At the moment, nobody really knows. So still quite a lot of questions to answer, which means that you should probably subscribe because we'll be answering them in the next few years. Until then, thank you for watching, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.